Today is day 79, March the 20th. For those of you going through the one-year Bible, we've got Numbers chapter 30, verse 1, through chapter 31, verse 54, Luke chapter 4, verse, 30, uh, verse 1 through verse 30, Psalm chapter 63, verse 1 through 11, and Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20 and 21. Today I want to look at this here in Luke chapter 4. I want to look in particular at verse 14 and 15. So chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. So what's going on here is this is right before Jesus' ministry gets going. And uh, Jesus goes out in the wilderness. He's fasting. And we see the devil tempting him over and over. And by the way, every time he rebukes the devil and beats the temptation, he's doing it by quoting scripture. It's important to know scripture. It's important to have that in your mind and your heart. So when the attacks of the enemy come, you have a weapon. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, scripture refers to this as as your your sword so uh, this is sharper than any double-edged sword this, this is this is good stuff if you're going to battle you want your weapon you just you don't want just the defensive tools you want something to go on the offense with and that's scripture so any rate that, that's extra that's that's not what i wanted to talk about uh, let's look at verse 14 and 15 here this is at the very end of the temptation. Jesus is coming out of the, uh, the wilderness after being tempted. It says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and report about him went out through all the surrounding country, and he taught in their synagogue, being glorified by all. I just think that's so cool. He didn't do any ministry, miracles, uh, in anything that you'd think He's not walking on water. All he did, only thing he did, was rebuke the devil with Scripture. But there was a difference when he came out. He was able to walk in the power of the Spirit. And that, that power of the Spirit, is what ends up stirring up the crowds to make people realize this this guy, this Jesus, this is somebody. We need to pay attention here. And and they they start uh, they start just going out and, and following him and learning from him and glorifying him. So what can we get from this? Well, here we see Jesus, he goes through a very hard time. Being tempted by the devil himself. And it was afterwards that the Spirit was on him. God is going to use hard seasons in your life. There's going to be hard seasons. Some of you guys are like, yeah, you're not telling me anything I don't know. I'm, I go through hard seasons. I'm, I'm actually in one right now with, uh, with my son. Those of you who know, you know. But uh, those hard seasons, God uses those to, to forge you, to stretch you, to grow you, to empower you. And He does it so that His Spirit can come upon your life and you have to rely on Him. You don't rely on anything that you've got figured out, anything that you, you think you can do on your own and your own strength. You, all you have is God and total reliance on Him. And because of that, through those, those trials, the temptations, the hard seasons, you're empowered and strengthened for your life's ministry. So those of you who have gone through hard things, I just want to encourage you. You've got ministry opportunities right now. Look for them. Look for where God wants to use you. Because He doesn't waste those hard times in your life. Those hard times in your life aren't for nothing. Those hard times are for something. What is the something He's got you in right now where you can just shine His glory for all to see? And those of you who are going through a hard time right now, Keep looking for that finish line. Keep pressing forwards, relying on Him and His strength. Because at the tail end, He's going to use you more than you can imagine. As a matter of fact, He's using you right now. You may not see it because you're too busy facing the giants. But He's using you. 
Stick with it. Don't give up. Be used by the Lord. Love you guys. Take care.